Ephesians chapter 4, beginning from verse 21. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. That he put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to his the deceitful laws. But be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That he put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore put away lying speak every man truth with his neighbor for we are members of one another be ye angry and sin not let not the sun go down on upon your wrath verse 27 is my verse of interest neither give place to the devil. Somebody say neither give place. To the devil. Hallelujah. Secondly the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities. Against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against Spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Hallelujah. The first functionary of the kingdom of darkness that was mentioned in the array is the principality. The word principality is a compound word. First of all, there is prince. And then secondly, there is Pality. And what it means in its combined action is a prince or an authority that exercises its authority on a polity, on a territory. It means that this prince is not is a being of no consequence if there is no territory. To exercise his authority. And so Paul admonishing us in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Because there is an entity called a principality that needs a territory to exert his influence, to exert his authority. Paul is now advising us and saying, give Satan. What? Oh my. You are weak. He said, give Satan no place. The Bible reveals that the devil moves around like a roaring lion. But it's not everybody that he can devour. He can only devour such as give him place. Because without place, a principality cannot exercise its authority. And there are many platforms that can provide a place for the workings of a demon. Your life is a platform. Your family is a platform. The territory in which you dwell is a platform. These evil spirits are looking for an occasion to find a premise where they can exercise their capacity. The fact that they exist doesn't make them relevant. But they become relevant when you afford them a place. And so Paul says, give Satan no place. Unfortunately, not so many people heeded the instructions of Paul. And many people on the basis of their lifestyle have accommodated the devil and given him a platform to operate. And the, 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 the issue here is, if you are responsible 
in handing out a platform to the devil to operate in your space, your case will be quite difficult to find a solution for. Because your hand was involved in securing the atmosphere for the devil to operate. I want to introduce another scripture quickly before I begin my case this evening. If you are still here, say amen. Tonight is a deliverance night. And that's why I'm coming from this angle. Because there are many yokes in the lives of men that must feel the heat of the power of Jesus. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 6. That's the first law of the spirit. The book of Romans has seven spiritual laws. And in Romans chapter 6 verse 16 we see the first spiritual law which is a law that reveals how you can accommodate Satan and give him a place to operate. Hallelujah. In the book of Romans chapter 16, 6 verse 16, Apostle Paul says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey, his servants are ye to whom ye obey. Now the key word in that scripture is obey. It means that anyone you obey, you become his spiritual slave. Even though God, through salvation, has afforded us an opportunity for us to live in on a platform that is far from the oppression of the enemy. Even as a believer, if you violate this principle, you have provided a platform for Satan's dominion in your life. Now, see, Paul was saying, if by any means you deliberately yield yourself as a servant of the devil to obey his instructions or oh, unconsciously unknown to you Satan has been installed around your life he has authority to manipulate your destiny whether you are born again or you are an unbeliever you just fulfilled the provision of the first spiritual law and in fulfilling that provision you have accommodated the authority of the devil. I remember there was a vibrant intercessor those days and he was heavily laden by the burden of poverty and he felt he needed to do something about it and what he did was succumb to the recommendations of one of his aunties that said there was a sorcerer that has the ability to design the problems that people carry. So this intercessor submitted himself to the ministry of the sorcerer. And after consulting the sorcerer, Satan began to appear in his bedroom. You see, he was free until he yielded to the authority of the devil. And the consequence was that he gave Satan space. Satan now had a theater to operate in his life, even though he was born again. And when Satan appeared, he tried to use his authority. I bind you! And Satan did not respond to his authority because he had violated the first spiritual law, which is the law of servitude. In the spiritual realm, are you with me? Okay, you, you don't understand. I'm saying that as a human being, you must serve something. Whether you serve God, if you are not serving God, you will, nonetheless, you will still serve another entity. And the way that is going to happen is if you yield yourself as a servant to obey. It's as simple as that. Satan will now legitimately have authority over your life. And he will begin to manipulate your destiny. 
just because you yielded as a servant to obey. It was in the experience of this intercessor that I discovered that if people go to the devil on the issues that they are supposed to go to God about, they make Satan their God. It is in that brother's life that I discovered that that principle was efficacious. Because the moment he turned to Satan, he made Satan his God. And Satan is a legalistic entity that will take advantage of any space that you provide for him. Hallelujah. Please help me tell your neighbor, give Satan no place. In my meticulous study of the Bible, I discovered six ways by which people open their space to the devil. Hallelujah. Six ways by which men open their space to the devil. And if we are going to undo the devil's authority here tonight so that people can enjoy the liberty that is in Christ Jesus, then we will have to address these grounds that have been afforded the enemy to operate in the lives of men. Number one, this one is common. It's a general one. It is not hidden. The first on my list is called sinful acts and habits. A sinful act and a sinful habit enthrones the devil, gives him occasion to begin to plunder your life. Hallelujah. I remember those days while we were still on campus. It was the student affairs department that was responsible for assigning rooms to people that were eligible to rooms. And so you might end up having a roommate with a different philosophy of life. And once upon a time in my room, I was the only born again Christian. The rest of the guys were gangsters. In fact, they said there's no need for us to lock the door. No need for us to have a key on the door. That people, nobody can steal from them. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, you can be coming into the room and you see them having sex. Meanwhile, they will not even, they are not bothered that you came. These things continued for a whole session. Few years ago, I saw the same person. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. He is trusting God for a child. Because he got married to a lady and the lady could not give birth for him. He discarded the lady and felt, he, okay, no, that he is potent. He's a lady that is, went and got under that lady. Married another lady, and the second lady too has not been able to give him children. Then he located me and asked me, say, Pastor, he has a challenge. The challenge is that God has refused to give him children. Now that his his state of childlessness has nothing to do with God. He gave Satan space. Don't think that you are living in immorality. That Satan will allow you to finish immorality. He wants to give you a mark. So that even if you give your life to Christ. He will still be taking your name to heaven. That there is a legality that was satisfied. When you were under his dominion. That God cannot reverse. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Satan wants to give you a mark. And I've seen so many people, many, many years while we're on campus, coming to look for me. What is the problem? Satan has started exploiting their lives. Now they want to be reasonable. Now they want to shut out the devil and focus on God. But yet, Satan left them with a mark. Paul warned us beforehand. He said, give Satan. 
this terrible being that is looking for occasion to destroy you. Paul says, give him no place. Because you may not recover from his mark. People looking for children. Hallelujah. A lady. They brought her to me in Lagos. And when they brought her to me, I asked her, what is the problem? She was weeping. Weeping profusely. Why are you weeping? She said she needs a child. She needs a child. She needs a child. Hallelujah. Before the prayer, I said, okay, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. God will, God will do it. But before the prayer, she, she herself stopped me. He said, wait. She knows she did wrong. That when she was on campus, she would go out with this man, go out with that man, and the implication of violating the principles of God is that there's a demon of barrenness that she contacted. And when people go out and contact things, it ends on the table of pastor. Meanwhile, Paul says, give Satan no place. Sinful acts are the first openers that exposes a man to demonic activity. Are you with me? You see, if I say what I'm hearing in the spirit, maybe it's for me. Maybe it's not for the congregation. You find, okay, let me say it. There is somebody in this hall, on this field, is a female. This female that I see, she masturbated away her virginity. That's what I saw now. Through masturbation. She disvirgined herself by masturbation. Now, the devil wants to put you in a situation where he will be the lord of your life. And he will determine what happens to you and what does not happen to you. I see many people bound here under the yoke of pornography. You know, initially when you started, it was not bondage. You could decide when to watch and when not to watch. But a time came when a spirit was added to your adventure. The capacity and the ability of your will to decide not to was no longer recognized because a spirit is involved. No, initially when you begin to go into treacherous waters, the devil will allow you entry and exit without putting a mark upon you. But at the point that Satan attaches a spirit to your life, your will no longer has the authority to determine a change of proceedings. You are bound to that particular addiction. Because there is a spirit that has been attached to ensure that you bow down to that kind of bondage. Sinful acts is the first way to allow demons into your space. Number two, we have what is called soul games. Um, you know, in modern times, there are books on divination. There are books on witchcraft. Pamphlets, very simple books. And I found people, many people, especially in western Nigeria, that felt, is there anything wrong studying along the line of divination? Studying along the line of witchcraft? It's just, just to know it. You just need to know it. So that maybe you'll be enlightened to be able to understand how to tackle it. Many have exposed their souls through such reading, there's someone that read a book on divination. And the book is so user-friendly. It's so life-applicable. Such that if you finish reading chapter 1, there's a workbook behind. Things that you'll be asked to do. If you finish that book and you do all, fulfill all the items in the workbook, by the time you arrive chapter 6, a spirit of divination will start appearing to you. I've seen people that read books and became slaves to Satan because they sought knowledge in the regions of darkness. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. 
There are people in our midst here tonight. You were exposed to things. And the things that you were exposed to. Has opened you up to a spirit that you are trying to get rid of. It is soulish exposure. There is a game. Are you with me? It's, it's a board game. It's called an Uji board. If your university library is up to date, you are likely to have an Uji board in the library. The Uji board is a game that a spirit comes to play with you. A familiar spirit comes to play that game with you. That game is a game of divination. The game is predictive. So when you begin to play the game, initially you are the only one playing, but in the middle of the game, you will discover that there's a spirit playing with you. My friend was giving me an instance because he saw the Uji board in University of Ibadan Library. And the game is easy to play. It's just that at some point, you will collide with a familiar spirit. And you'll be amazed at the accuracy of the familiar spirit. When the spirit comes and takes the other side, you will be amazed. Oh my. If you know the name of your grandfather, that, that spirit can actually spell the name of your grandfather. And you begin to see supernatural things happening. Unknown to you, you have, your soul has wandered into dark territory. You will never be the same again after playing that game. Now, several other people here, maybe you practice Bible turning. Say, Bible, if it's Janet that took it, let it turn, turn. That is the practice of divination. It has opened your soul to the regions of darkness. There is no way you can do that and be a normal person. Because when you seek in the hands of the devil something that you should only seek from God, you make Satan your God. In a particular church in Zaria, some, somebody did something wrong. And then the head pastor of the church was the one that gathered a committee for Bible turning. Uh, Bible. If it's Pastor Joe that took the money, turn, 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 turn. And another minister of the gospel came into the midst of the committee and asked the head pastor, what are you doing? The pastor said, this thing has worked before. The reason why there was a re-implementation of the policy was that previously it was consulted and it worked before. Please help me tell your neighbor the fact that it is working doesn't mean it is God. Those are things that expose your soul. And when your soul has been exposed in that particular way, you are a carrier of a demonic liability. Satan will all, is looking for space. is looking for occasion. is looking for an opportunity. And ministers of the gospel, before you begin to pray for someone, take some time to interview them. And find at what point the person explored the regions of darkness. Because if that is the case, there is a defined pattern by which such a person can be delivered from the influence of the devil. Soul games. Hallelujah. There's, there's a young man the other time. He likes witchcraft things. He's not a witch, but he likes the, he likes the things. He likes it. And because he likes it, a real witch now enticed him and called him and said, See, you have powers. You have spiritual powers, but you are not exploring it. I said, No, he wants to explore power. He likes power. Hallelujah. And they gave him something to put in his pocket. And they call it the stone of Solomon. The stone of Solomon. They say he should put that in his pocket. Anytime he wants favor, he wants people to do things for him, let him put his hand in his pocket and touch the stone. Touch it. So as he's touching the stone, he's manipulating the people to favor him. So he was liking it. It was as if the thing was working initially. He wanted money. He touched the stone. The person gave him money. The person said, car, I don't have money. Oh. But the person... 
got money for him. He said, ah, this stone is working now. He, he, he began to touch the stone, began to touch the stone. Hallelujah. After a while, he looked for the stone, he didn't find it again. It's a demon that started appearing to him. By connecting with that stone, he was actually drawing power from that demon. Now that he was under the influence of the demon, there was no need for the stone to stand as a barrier. The demon began to appear to him. For a very long time, he could not say it because the demon said, if you say it, you die. Hallelujah. That is why that person that came here with charm. I don't know whether you came to test power or you came to check if Jesus' power is more than the one you are carrying. You see, if you leave this place without submitting that charm, you are on your way out of this life. This call I gave is to secure your life, to secure your destiny. You don't have much time left. I bring one into you. In the name of Jesus. Number three. Wickedness. Wickedness is one of the tools through which doors can be opened to the devil. And when we say an act is wicked, it means it is done against somebody that has no capacity to defend himself. When you find a vulnerable person and you oppress that person. Wickedness is one of the ways to open the doors to the devil. For instance, if there is someone here that you committed abortion. It's an act of wickedness. That person you killed did not have any means of defending himself. Defending herself. Abortion is an act of wickedness. And when you are a partaker of wickedness, if you don't know how to restitute that position effectively, you become a customer for demons and for devils. Satan is looking for place. The Bible calls him, he's like a roaring lion, looking for who to devour. He needs to look because not everybody provides space for him. Paul says that we should give Satan no place. I've seen a lady before in the city of Cana. And she came for us to pray for her. Because she was three years into marriage. And was looking for the fruit of the womb desperately. And while we wanted to pray for her. A vision of the spirit came. And we saw something like a balloon. And then there were two. Two sticks of broom. The sticks of broom pricked the, ba the balloon. And busted it. And the Lord said abortion. 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 Hallelujah. Unknown to her. Because in the vision. Are you still with me? In the vision. We also saw that when she was aborting. There was a demon that was taking the blood. And it is that demon that took the blood from her. As evidence that was blocking her womb. From taking in subsequently. And now she had come to the pastor. But when she came to us for prayer, she did not say there was an issue of abortion in the background. I've seen that many people can come for prayer, but they don't come with sincerity. If God doesn't open your eyes as a pastor to see the things that they are hiding, you will be impotent in ministering to them. We have to lead her through an elaborate confession in order for us to secure God's mercy enough to ask God to stretch forth his hand again. And that's why I have realized in my experience in ministry that if you find someone that is not blatantly sincere, they never get free from the bondage of the devil. Your way out of satanic bondage begins with engaging the virtue of sincerity. The Bible says, whoso covereth his sins shall not prosper. But he that confesseth and forsaketh them shall find mercy. There's a protocol to securing mercy from God. And in many instances, especially as it has to do with wickedness, if you have not yet secured mercy, those demons 
will still be very, very intact. If you are still here tonight, say amen. Number four. Drugs. 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 It was in Makode here. I was um, in the office when a young man was brought to me. And the man, the guy was saying strange things, strange things, strange things. Ha. So I said, these things you are saying, who is telling you? He said, it's the spirit that possessed his grandfather. That the spirit has come to him. The spirit told him that he's the one that is the chosen one. Okay, you are the chosen one. He said, yeah. He now told me that he even has a prophecy for me. That Do I want to hear the prophecy? I said, no, I'm not interested in his prophecy. He should keep his prophecy. Hallelujah. That, that, that the spirit has been revealing things to him. He even revealed about me. That he wants to give me a prophecy. I said, hold it there, hold it there. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I now asked him, how do you, if you want this, your spirit to be activated, the presence of the spirit to be activated, how do you activate it? He said, he needs to smoke. When he smokes, then the presence of the spirit will become conspicuous. So the entry point into that realm was to use drugs. Are you here? To use what? Drugs. Now, these things I'm saying is not strange to some of you. The Lord sent me to you so that the yoke you carry can be destroyed. But... If you lose the virtue of sincerity this night. That's why I gave that announcement. Only people that are naked and sincere will find mercy of God. Hallelujah. Drugs. So he goes and sniffs a stick of cigarette. And when he does that, the influence of that spirit becomes tangible. Then he begins to give words like insight. He says, all right, I, I see that. Okay, that accident, I saw it before it happened. The entry point was drugs. It was when Anand traveled eventually to South America. Anand saw some people. There is something they sniff. It's called crack. When they sniff crack, hallelujah, the person becomes mad for about nine, nine to twelve days. Anywhere there is dustbin that is so smelly that he likes that environment. Crack. Now, that's not normal. He has been exposed to a realm, the realm of unclean spirits. And his behavior is according to the unclean spirits that are manipulating his mind. By 12 noon, we are going out. You see people under the influence of crack. One can just lie down on the road. Twelve in the afternoon. Only God knows when he will recover himself. Because the drugs that he uses opens him up to a dimension. And as long as he's under the influence of those drugs, that dimension becomes more real to him than the natural realm. Finally. The, the last point is very technical. Before I mention the point, I need to explain something in the Bible. You know, God is called in the Old Testament the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Is that true? In that, in that reality, we see the power of inheritance. In fact, if you come to the New Testament when the Bible talks about how Jesus made salvation possible for us. Salvation did not begin with Jesus. Salvation began with Abraham. It was the covenant that God caught with Abraham. Because that covenant was caught with Abraham and his seed. Before Abraham came, there were great people that had risen. Men like Enoch. Men like Noah. But God did not begin any process of redemption with this great man. God began the protocol of redemption with Abraham. And it was a covenant he made with Abraham and with his seed. That is the basis of salvation today. Because in the book of Galatians chapter 3, 
the Bible reveals that that seed that the Bible speaks of, that God made the covenant with, alongside Abraham was Jesus. If you see what is going on here, it's an arrangement of inheritance. Because the Bible says that as many as are Christ's, they are Abraham's seed inheritance. So we cannot talk about spiritual things without talking about inheritance. And so if there's somebody in this place that your ancestors were in iniquity, there is no way you will not see the implication of that transaction and the judgment that came through those violations manifest in your life. We know that in Christ Jesus there is an escape route. But we cannot undermine the potency and the potential of inheritance in spiritual matters. So there are some on this field that are implicated spiritually because there is negative inheritance liabilities that have been positioned against your life. And in such circumstances we need to tell you how that you can superimpose your heritage in Christ Jesus and enforce it so that it can swallow up other possible liabilities that may have transferred to you on the basis of inheritance. Finally, I need to say that someone that is in Christ Jesus cannot be possessed because your spirit is a one bedroom flat. Only one spirit can possess your spirit. But someone that is born again can be demonized. Because beyond your spirit, there are still faculties that sustain chambers that demons can take advantage of. Like your soul is a vast island that demons can possess. When you find people operating under confusion, if you find people operating with a lying spirit, it means that there are aspects of their life that are under the control of demons. Even Christians can be controlled that way. There are several people whose sexual capacity are not natural. They are aided by demons. So there are demons in those faculties regulating the use of some of those organs. Remember the madman of Gadara when Jesus came to him and say, what is your name? The man said, my name is Legion. And he told us why. Because we are many. So there were many spirits that possessed him. But there was only one spirit that was answering Jesus. The spirit that was answering Jesus is the head of the demonic gang. And that spirit is the one that possesses the one bedroom flat of his spirit. That one has authority, much more authority in the life of that madman than the rest. In fact, the rest were brought in to help secure the space that that one spirit has secured in his spirit. The spiritual world is real. And there are many men that you see at the bus stop that are held by powerful demons of darkness. Demons held sway until Jesus showed up. The ministry of deliverance was pioneered by Jesus himself. And tonight, if you give the Lord a chance, he will heal you. I didn't hear your amen. I said tonight if you give Jesus a chance. He will heal you. Hallelujah. Three steps to freedom. One is to acknowledge your sin. There are many things you can do in hiding. Not deliverance. If what you need is deliverance, then there must be an acknowledgement of the sin that is the premise upon which Satan has the advantage over your life.
Number two, be desperate. Any man that is not desperate against demonic attacks, demonic influences will never be free. Number three is repentance. Then number four, I will do with you. Number one is what? Number two is what? Number three is what? If you are here tonight and there is a sin in your life, you have tried to stop it by an act of your will, you could not. It's still there. It might be pornography. It might be fornication. It might be adultery. But you know there is a sin. You want to be free but you cannot. And the reason why you cannot is because your will doesn't sustain sufficient authority to change your life. Because the spirit is involved. If you are not ashamed, rise up from where you are sitting. Come. You will be free. Remember, you need to be open. You need to be open. If you are not open, there is no chance for your liberty. You are in a sin. It may be immorality. It may be that you have a lying spirit. You seek deliverance from Jesus. You have to be open. The Bible says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall find mercy. If you are already at the front, begin to ask God for mercy right now. Ask Him for mercy. It's a night of deliverance. It's a night of deliverance. I know you sing in the choir in your church, but you have not been able to leave fornication. Sometimes you leave it for two weeks and then you go back again for another three weeks. Because your will is weak. It means you are a slave. But Jesus can set you free. Just cry to him. Don't look at the preacher. The preacher can't do much. Look to him and ask him for mercy. 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 I'm still waiting for you in the congregation. That sin has kept you on one spot. Your mates have married, but you are a sex object. He can set you free. He can set you free. He can set you. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. If you are, if you are sincere, Jesus will do his work in your life. Ask him for mercy. Say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Did you commit an abortion some time ago or you gave money for someone to abort for you? And anytime you want to become serious with God, the Spirit of God will bring to your remembrance that sin. Can you rise up, join them? And ask God for mercy. Ask God for mercy. You went to consult the devil. Even though you are a Christian. Even though you are born again. You went to consult the devil. You sought the devil's help. And unknown to you. You made Satan your God. Come out and join them. And ask him for mercy. You made Satan your God. Join them. Join them. You gave money to a native doctor so that he will see for you. Join them. You corrupted your life from that moment. Ask him for mercy. Ask him. Say, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Are you in the congregation? You use drugs. You were deceived 
that if you take this drug, a wise spirit will minister to you. You can break that yoke. You can join them right now. It's between you, your sincerity, and God. If you want to linger in bondage, you can wait behind. Are you a victim? Have you used witchcraft before? You use witchcraft. You did Bible turning. You played games with spirits. And now poverty has become your person. It's an unnatural poverty. You want to be free? Join in quickly. Those of you in the front cry. Talk to him. Make sure you are crying like Bartimaeus. Have mercy on me. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Oh, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. There's one of you, you are a pastor. But demons torment you and you know the reason why they have access to your life. Ask him for mercy. Ask him for mercy. Ask him for mercy. If you are sincere, Jesus will respond. For those of you in the congregation, I want you to rise up and begin to pray for my brothers and my sisters here. There's serious business going on right here. Serious business. That these ones might be delivered. That they might be released. That they might be released from the yoke. Ask God for mercy on their behalf. He was so messy right now. Don't hide the sin. Mention it. Mention it to him. Mention it to him. Tell him you are tired of fornication. You are tired of masturbation. him right now he can see your tears he can see your tears I want to know I surrender
in Jesus name all of you all of you in the front just put your chest as we pray father repeat after me father I can't hear you I renounce this sin in my life. Mention the name of the sin. I ask for mercy. Have mercy on me. Every covenant that I entered into Knowingly or unknowingly, let his power be broken from off my soul. Today, I surrender. Today, I surrender. Let every demonic influence around my life be broken. Set me free. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let me pray for you. Lift your right hand up. There are some of you that God will, in order to restore you, he will anoint you. He will release an anointing on you so that you can be restored. Father, if you are heard our prayers I ask that you respond by anointing your sons and your daughters especially the ones that have a calling on their lives that calling that could not function because there was an accusation of the devil I ask that in this place you will grant that they be anointed so that they can begin to function beyond the reproach of the devil in the name of Jesus. So I ask from my left hand side to my right hand side, Lord, begin to anoint them. Begin to anoint. 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 Begin to anoint them. 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 Holy Ghost. 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 Let there be a release of fire. 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 Hey, there's an anointing coming upon somebody. It's coming so strong. It's coming so strong. It's coming so strong. Come on. Let the yoke of the devil break. Hey, there's one of you, you will begin to receive songs in the night. And there's an anointing coming. 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 Lose her in the name of Jesus. There's one of you here. Your hands are, will, will become hot in, in a few seconds. It will become hot because God is giving you the anointing to be able to pray for the sick. Yes, it's coming stronger. It's coming stronger. It's coming stronger. Oh, Jesus is for healing. There's one of you now. The anointing coming on you is for restoration. You have lost too many things. And God is releasing this anointing so that you can be restored. Father, locate that person. 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 Lift up your hands. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus. I release a blessing on every household that is represented here tonight. Let the old things pass away. Let divine things begin to happen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless every family. 
I bless every home. I bless every life. Let your hand remain on them in the name of Jesus.